Case File 272, The Battersea Poltergeist. I'm Braden. I'm Zell. I'm Dan. And I'm Andrew. Uh, this is stamping it right now. The world's most poltergeist. The world's most poltergeisty poltergeist. <laughs> yeah. It's high okay. on the geistometer. Geistiest? The geistiest poltergeist. Poltergeist, yeah. I suppose. It's very geisty. Dan, do you have your um, geistometer calibrated? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I zeroed it out this morning. Oh, How? How'd you zero it? <laughs> to what? Well, there are no <laughs> poltergeists currently in my house, so zero. So it's at zero. <laughs> so it's at zero. <laughs> okay. That checks so, out. Uh, just a thought I was having before we start this one, because I think it's relevant. I was, I was listening to this and read, doing some reading and stuff. When I was thinking about poltergeists, you kind of get the trend of like how a poltergeist starts. It's like small stuff, right? It, it always seems to be small stuff. And then that progresses to uh, more, it gets, shit gets more and more crazy. Like as the time goes on living with this poltergeist. And it kind of made me think that I wonder if everyone kind of has run run-ins with poltergeist, but because you don't give it, the like maybe these things feed on attention like they're attention horrors right because i was thinking like you know when you you so you're you know, a like poltergeist you, is that what you yeah mean? yeah <laughs> uh you you got your keys whatever this is an example you got your keys you put them down and then you're like where the fuck are my keys you're like i know put them somewhere then you walk around the house you're like look everywhere and you're like there's no keys and then all of a sudden they're on your kitchen counter you're like i fucking looked there you're like what that's weird <laughs> and you grab them and you pay no more attention right Part of me wonders if like if those kind of events could be chalked up to poltergeist activity. But the difference is is that you're not dwelling on that. Like the mm -hmm. more you were like if you were to really you're be missing like, something though, you're missing a key factor. It can't that? be a poltergeist unless you're an adolescent girl. Yeah, yeah. That's it. That is the one fucking key contributing factor to initiating a poltergeist. No, I'm I'm on Braden's side of this. I think everyone probably has a poltergeist attached to them. Kind of like you know, people call them guardian angels. They're not. They're just poltergeists. Most of them are friendly. You never pay them any mind because they don't really do much. They kind of subtly fuck with you all the time. Yeah. Just but a little bit. As, as you pay the mind and you're like, like, so say if like I put my keys on my counter, found them, and then I was like, I know I didn't put my keys there. I, and you're just like really bothered by this and you, you give more like, how did they get there? And like the more like energy and stuff you put in, the more you feed this thing to then, right? Then you get the ghost footsteps like, Right, do, 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 do. I don't know. And you're like, what that, the fuck? That is can, that? buddy, that'll derail my day. I, I've watched. If I can't find my keys, adventure, I know how this works. <laughs> if I can't I find a, my keys, I'll flip a fucking table. I'm not angry. I had a polter, oh, poltergeist. You're the poltergeist. <laughs> Maybe. Oh. I have a. I had a poltergeist steal an entire lanyard of keys just last week, and it's gone forever. I don't know where they went. They're on a big red lanyard. Can't lose them. They're gone. Buddies, no one has stronger poltergeist than you, Zell. A poltergeist stole your fucking Toyota Tacoma. Right out of the driveway. Vanished. Mm -hmm. I just got gone. a four year four year reminder the other day. Gone. Right? Gone. It's That's been right. four years. Never found again. <laughs> that was a good post. <laughs> R.I.P. Blue. R.I.P. Uh, Sent it to the group chat. Ah. It, hurt. That hurt. it hurt to read that again. That popped up later. in my memories. I, yeah, four year, I think it's four years ago. That's pretty good. Yeah. Shame. <laughs> posted the posted the missing truck ad. <laughs> hey, remember when this happened? Thanks, Hold the guys. Facebook. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, yeah that's, you should rephrase that post. We post like, hey, like the it's the fucking mountain av poltergeist. <laughs> so much shit goes missing. No one's had more shit stolen than Zell has had stuff stolen in his life. I've had iPads. I've had a full full suspension mountain bike, a truck. Hey, that has nothing to do with his carefree attitude and never locking doors and leaving nothing keys at all. Trucks. Well, and the and fact that he's got all the fancy <laughs> shit. Nobody's stealing yeah. my stuff because it sucks. <laughs> That's true. Not one person has broken into meth laboratories. Ever. My guitar. Not even about my it. guitar got stolen. Mm. At one time, they, they broke into my car because they thought there was an iPhone in my car, but it was just like an old broken screen that I had replaced. And they didn't take anything. They just left everything. Just left I, think they, I think they left, left it wide stuff. open. They left, left you a note that said, hey, fuck you, buddy. No, yeah. that's not true, actually. <laughs> I was in paramedic school. They took all my, my school books and shit like that and just walked around Glenmore ripping them in, ripping them in pieces. And them in. <laughs> <laughs> it was awesome. Uh, uh, it was really cool. Uh, but we're talking today about, uh, honestly, 
I'm a little surprised I've never heard about this one before. Before we got into it, because like as far as polter poltergeist cases go, poltergeist. like poltergeist. I mean, <laughs> poltergeist. <laughs> That's poltergeist. how I like it. The, yeah, yeah. If there's more than one, it's poltergeist. Uh, uh, or polter gooses. I don't know which one, but either either way, like I was surprised because I'm like, man, this is such a fucking big case and spans over such a long duration of time. Like fucking twelve uh, years, so, right? And uh, I think we've talked about other ones that kind of tag into this, like the Enfield Poltergeist. I'm pretty sure we talked about that. Yep. And this is like a precursor, really, to to that one. So it, it was kind of weird that we uh, it took us this long to get on the, the Battersea Poltergeist yeah the uh this this case is interesting because it's none of those ones like we did we did the watsika wonder that one time and uh, we we talked about how a lot of the poltergeist uh paranormal cases that are the most uh interesting um are the ones that usually have like a singular person who kind of accounts for it somebody who kind of documents it um and interacts with the with the phenomenon like on a, a fairly regular basis and um that's what you get with this case is that you get a lot of you don't get a lot of separate accounts you get like maybe one or two but they're very detailed and they're very like it's a person that is very consistent basis tracking everything that's going on there's good documentation there's journals there's a lot of um there's a lot of physical documentation letters and correspondence and stuff like that our newspaper articles all this stuff that kind of adds up to this wonderfully weird tale <laughs> of this of this polter geese <laughs> um and and it starts it starts out weird enough that you're kind of like okay yeah this this might be the beginning of something that is truly weird so uh in late january of 1956 um <laughs> uh, there was a key that was found uh by one um Shirley uh, Shirley Hitchens uh and you know it, to describe it it was approximately two inches long and silver in color and um it looked like it would be designed for a small lock that you might find on a desk or something uh and so Shirley brought it home uh to her house on oh, uh, Wycliffe I, number 63 Wycliffe Road I thought she I thought she woke up and it was on her pillow not yet not yet not yet oh, she found it first God, it fucking she found it first, and then when she brought it home, uh, you know, her, you know, showed it to her father and stuff. Her father may, thought maybe it was a key that's something to around the house, and maybe he did. He walked around the entire house, they said, and he kind of like tried the key in each of the locks around the house, and, and none of them, the key didn't fit in any of them. So, <laughs> yeah, so you, she, she found this fucking key from outside, like somewhere outside, then brings it home, and then dad starts. Hoping that it opens a lock in their house. Yeah. He's like, I'm going to try it. He's like, maybe it's a skeleton key. I thought it was just on the table or something. First, I thought it was in the house, but. I thought it was in the house, too. They're like, from the accounts that I read is that she found it in the house and was like, hey, this is peculiar. What's this key? And he's like, oh, I don't know. And that's a weird thought. That's a weird thought because I'm like, what if that's how a poltergeist like gets in your home? Is like, think about your house right now. I, I can guarantee you. All three of you and everyone listening, if you open a drawer, there's a key in a drawer and you go, I don't know what the fuck this key's for. Yeah, torture it. Guarantee. It. Just throw it out. Yeah. Don't try don't it. Don't pay chances. that key any mind. Toss it out. That's a polter goose. Get it out. <laughs> um, so by by Shirley's Hitchens father, his name is Wally. By his account, he had left the key after he had tried it in every lock, you know, key, uh, lock and door, cupboard, desk, anywhere he could find a, a lock, um, and it didn't work. He put it on uh, the kitchen table. But the next day, the key was found on top of Shirley's bed. Oh, and like Shirley, like, like, Shirley, like, Shirley, like, brought it and was like, hey, oh, did you put the key here? And he's What's like, What's this key doing here? He's like, Where'd you, where'd you find it? She's like, On my bed. And he's like, Wait, did you put it there? And he's like, she's like, no. And he's like, well, I didn't put it there. What? You you must have. And like the dad kind of was like, thought like she's playing jokes. Right, on and that was a beautiful dramatic. Hey guys, thanks for watching. I know it's annoying to watch these broken up in ten minute segments, but here's the next one over here. Or if you want to watch the whole thing uncut and after hours, just click this link to our website and uh, give us a donation. You get full access to it on Patreon. Anyways, thanks guys. Enjoy the next video.